Welcome, I am Dr. Paula Herring, and I'll be speaking a little bit about applied research and industry application. How does the doctorate student begin the dissertation process? Think about this opportunity you have with your course, the dissertation process course, 8210. In this course, you're going to be exploring all the foundational tools available to you and a lot of brainstorming to get the critical thinking process going. Every paper that you write, with every course that you take at this university, think about building your own personal library. So every engagement, every paper, every case study is an opportunity for you as the doctoral student to be building your own database of research. And you save that just by opening up a new file on your laptop and start dumping these articles in so that maybe you don't know exactly what your dissertation topic is yet, but you're starting to get ideas. You're generating the foundation for you don't know what yet. Think about the possibility as you work through your courses of this not being a separate course from dissertation. The minute you start your doctorate class, you're already starting dissertation. Again, you don't know exactly where it's leading, but through all of your coursework, you're adding on data into your own personal library. You're constructing your own database, and of course, you're reading every day. You are reading The Economist, you're reading Harvard Business Review, you're reading every journal you can get your hands on as part of your daily practices, your daily mantra, so that this is part of your habits and a part of you that it's not unusual for you to be reading later on when you do get into the depths of dissertation. And the Venn diagram is, is a tool that I like to use uh, to illustrate possibilities in framing some of your research in the dissertation process. So the Venn diagram, if you don't know who Venn is, look it up, John Venn, you should know, mathematician from the 1800s. But this Venn diagram illustrates the possibility of some spheres coming together in your research. So for example, what is your career? If you are currently working in the accounting industry or if you're currently working in project management, that may be the lens that you want to use for the research that you're going to be conducting for your dissertation. It's probably a path that you're already on and you want to continue on that path, maybe uh, accelerate it into a, a different, uh, smaller area, but you know, you're maybe settled into that path and you want to expand through the dissertation. Another opportunity for the building of your research and for thinking about the methodology or foundation of your dissertation is what is your passion? That could be something from a past travel. It could be something regarding your fantasy about what you want to do in the future for a career. It could be about a, a, an interest or a hobby that's gotten out of control and you know that it's in you and it's in your DNA. And the dissertation is a way for that DNA to come out. A third Venn diagram sphere, there could be more than three, but for the simplicity of this recording, it's just three. Think about your future. So you don't, the future doesn't exist yet. You're building your future. You're creating the future. It's not a known commodity. So that's a big question mark in that sphere about what is the future, but what do you envision for the future? Another illustration of a Venn diagram, I can share with you my personal foundation for my dissertation research. And I pulled these three moving pieces. There were a lot more, but three main um, areas that collided. And number one was business. I had been involved and have been involved with business most of my career. So after being in international management and having been in various nonprofits and in academics, business was really the center of my, of my world career-wise. Something else that was important to me from my past and present and future was my gender identification as a female. And so women within business was something that I had always been involved with, not only as a participant, but also as an observer and something that I knew was intriguing to me about how there was movement within gender identification and the world of business. Lastly, my passion. I had the opportunity to work at an orphanage and help start an orphanage in Rwanda many years ago, and that became a passion. I returned to Rwanda many times to work with the kids that I got to know. I met with the um, accreditation department in Kigali and helped establish accreditation for this orphanage to become a school. I helped get healthcare funding for the orphanage, and this was a passion of mine. I worked with my husband for many years and another group of volunteers for many years on this. So it became a, a new part of my DNA. 
when I had the opportunity to design my, uh, my dissertation, I realized there was something about Rwanda that really I wanted to be an investment in my future. So past, present, and future, again, you see how they collided. And if you look at that tiny dot somewhere in the middle that you might not be able to see, that was my dissertation. All of these Venn spheres were colliding and intersecting and building something new. I just didn't know what that was yet. How will your research contribute to the industry? How is your research going to add something new for the better of society? That's a question that you should be thinking about as you're building your, your dissertation. It may not be for the job that you have at the moment, but think bigger picture about industry-wide, whether that's project management or statistics or economics. Where would you like this to add to the gap that you're finding right now in your research that you're beginning? Who are your mentors? It might not be your boss. It might not be someone currently in your life, and that's a good reason to go find mentors. When you go to a conference, which you should be attending, when you're reading an article, which you should be reading, when you're out in the community at any kind of a networking event, you should always be on the lookout for mentors. People who are going to support you are intrigued with your dissertation focus and intrigued with you and supportive of you being a doctorate student. What are you going to add? Again, you might not know what that is, but through your mentorship and through your own research, you're creating that. Visualize yourself as the expert. You know that you know something that no one else knows. You don't know yet what it, what it is, but there's something in you that's going to contribute something new to that gap in your industry and a gap in the uh, current literature available, and that's where you're going to come in and uh, contribute something completely new. Again, back to my first point about building your own database through research, you might not find the article you want for the case study that you're working on in your course. Is that a gap? Put that in your database, put that in your file. If you can't find the research that you need, it could be that that's exactly what you should be researching. Locally, regarding networking, this is just a quick inventory of some associations, professional associations, kind of the larger well-known in different industries. I'm not gonna read them to you, take a look at this slide. The last one is my plug for a local organization that I'm a member of, and that's the San Diego Diplomacy Council that does a lot of delegations for international guests all over the world that are here in San Diego almost any given week of the month. They have over 300 delegations a year, and it's uh, with a student membership, the fees are small, you could join this organization and be networking at events, including lectures and dinners and other opportunities for hosting people visiting from out of the US. The other networking opportunities, again, with a student membership, you can be a part of an association in your industry. They each have publications, they each have conferences, they have roundtable discussions. You should really be a member of at least one of these associations, which will help you, again, in the dissertation process and networking. And of course, LinkedIn came at the very bottom of that slide, be on LinkedIn, and it's not using it just as a resume dump, it's an opportunity for networking and connecting with other people who may even be contributing to your dissertation focus, who may even be helping you with industry focus. And lastly, if you don't have anything substantive to write, you're not reading enough, a very wise professor constantly told me that if you're not getting any words on pages, you're not reading enough words on the pages. So constant reading, constant networking are going to result in your dissertation and it's going to be a success. I already know it. You might not know it yet. That was my short, uh, hopefully inspiring opportunity to think about current research, future research, and how you can get started with your dissertation. Thank you so much.